Well, praise the Lord. This is Mark Irvin. I'm so glad to be with you again for another message of faith, hope, and love. And today we're going to begin a brand new series. The series that we're going to begin is on righteousness. Righteousness. We've got some powerful, powerful things to share with you. I'm going to share with you a series in the next few days, a series of teaching that absolutely changed, revolutionized my life. Father, I just pray right now in Jesus' name that you would speak through me. Father, I pray that you would speak directly into the hearts of each and every person, Father, that listens to this message online over this internet faith, hope, and love broadcast. Father, I pray right now that you'd give revelation in the name of Jesus, that you speak directly into their hearts. And I thank you, Father, that as, as we know the truth, the truth makes us free. Father, we are free, and we are complete in you. And Father, we thank you that as this truth comes into our soul, we get free in our soul and we get free in our life. Lord, to shine, to come forth as the sons and the daughters of God that you've called us to come forth as in this earth, doing the same works that Jesus did, living the same life that Jesus did, walking in the same kind of relationship and fellowship with you that Jesus had. <clears throat> that's what, Lord, we desire through your word to come forth in our lives. And that's what you've made it possible for us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Before we get into the message, I want to share with you something. If you'd like to get onto our mailing list, <clears throat> all you have to do is write us an email. And our email uh, information is at the bottom of this video. If you'd like to receive our newsletter, we send out this newsletter on a monthly basis. Right now, it's coming out in English and German. And in this, uh, the last one that we sent out, we had different articles in it about the trip to the Philippines and the salvations and people that were healed, as well as the leadership conference or the healing conference that we had in Malaysia. Then normally we put a teaching in there. We talk about what God is doing here in Germany. We talk a little bit about partnership and what it means to be a partner with the ministry of from faith to faith to the nations there's information about upcoming meetings meetings all over the world as well as meetings and conferences that we have here in germany and so if you'd like to to receive this i know that it'll greatly bless you it'll inspire you and we send this out electronically through our email list we also regularly send out updates weekly updates about uh, current events, testimonies, things that have happened, as well as links into different things that we have on our website, as well as series that we have that you can download. All these things are free. We provide these things free. They're, they're provided for through the partners and the people that support the ministry of From Faith to Faith to the Nations. So anyway, just wanted to make a comment about that. If you'd like to, again, receive our newsletter, send us your email request just write us an email and say yes i'd like to receive your newsletter and uh, we'll see to it that you get our newsletter and again it comes out in right now both english and german we're also rebuilding our website page to make it a little bit easier <clears throat> to get around in and and we'll have more information about that as we uh, progress toward the the new steps in that well praise god are you ready righteousness righteousness is now listen to this righteousness is the ability to stand before the presence of god righteousness is the ability to stand before the presence of god or we could say righteousness is the ability to be in relationship with God. God is holy. God is just. There is no imperfection in him. There's no sin in him. He's worthy. He's holy. He's just. He's pure. Righteousness is the ability to stand 
in the presence of God without a sense of guilt or inferiority as if man had never sinned before. What a powerful definition of righteousness. It's the ability to stand before the presence of God without a sense of guilt or inferiority as if we had never sinned before. Now the question that I present to you is this righteousness possible in this life? Or is this something that we have to wait for? For many years of my life, this is something that I thought I had to wait for. I had to wait until this to the life after. I had to wait until heaven. I had to wait, you know, if I made it. <laughs> that was the thinking. Righteousness. Can this righteousness, can this ability to stand before the presence of God, to be in relationship with God, is this ability possible for you and I today? God is spirit. And the only way that we could have relationship with God as a spirit being, the only way that we could have relationship with God as father and to be his sons, or his daughters to be one with him and to him for him to be one with us the only way the holy spirit could live on the inside of you and i the only way that we could be born again with god living in us is for you and i to be righteous god is holy he's just he's pure he's worthy there's no imperfection in him and if we are still sinners god cannot live in us the Holy Spirit cannot live in us. He is a Holy Spirit. And so this is the first question that, that, I, that I present to you today. Is this possible for man? Is it possible for man in this earthly life to be righteous? To have the ability to stand before the presence of God without a sense of guilt. No guilt. Think about that. To be completely free from guilt. To be completely free from guilt is to know you have no sin. To know you have never sinned. That's righteousness. Righteousness is the ability to stand before the presence of God without a sense of guilt or inferiority. That means no fear, no inferiority complex. Completely confident completely confident in your relationship with God, completely confident in your fellowship with God, completely confident in your prayer time, your, your communication with God, God communicating with you. This is the foundation, I'm telling you. This is the foundation for everything in your Christian life, the foundation of righteousness. What you know and the revelation that you have about righteousness determines the kind of victory that you will have in your life. It determines whether or not you walk in health in your body. It determines the success that you will have as a Christian. It determines the ability of God working through you to bring forth the fruit, his fruit through you in this life. It determines the kind of confidence that you have. It determines the kind of faith that's released through your life. All of these things go back to this foundation of righteousness. Righteousness is the ability. Now think about this again. It's the ability to stand before the presence of God without a sense of guilt. No guilt. It's completely gone. All of your sin is completely gone. With, uh, to stand before the presence of God without a sense of guilt or inferiority. Inferiority. Without a sense of guilt or inferiority. Now think about this. As if you had never. Wow. As if you had never sinned before. Is this possible for you and I to live this way? 
in our lives. I'm telling you, there was a time I did not know this was possible. I didn't know this. And, you know, I got saved when I was seven years old. And, and, and from that point on, you know, as a, as a child, I grew up with a lot of religious teaching. I grew up with the idea we're sinners, we're still sinners, we sin every day, we fail. I grew up with the idea that, you know, if you had one unconfessed sin in your life, you would not make heaven. I grew up with the idea, you know, when you pray prayers, you pray this way, Lord, if it be your will, please. We begged God, we did all of these things, grew up with Fear that if Jesus were to come right now, I would miss the rapture because maybe there was something in my life that was not right. I grew up every single day, every single day, Lord, help me not sin today. I'd wake up and say, oh God, and this was in, you know, my, my high school and my teenage years. This was during that time in my life. And and it, 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 was, it was a disaster. It was an absolute disaster on the inside with all of this sin consciousness, not knowing who I was in Christ, not knowing that God through Jesus had taken care of the sin problem, not, not knowing the things that I'm going to teach you through this series. I'm telling you, this series is going to change your life. Wow. Wow. And see, that's the way it's been with the church in the past. The church in the past has neglected to teach the revelation of the New Testament. The church has spent so much time focusing on all of the Old Testament things, the Old Testament stories, David and Goliath and Jonah and and uh, Samson and and we could go on and on Moses and Abraham and and I'm not saying that those things aren't important but please when you teach Old Testament teach Old Testament in the light of the New Testament it's so important that we know who we are in Christ and man for 4,000 years was not born again meaning that he did not have the Spirit of God on the inside of him and he was not righteous inside in the spirit during that time righteousness was accredited it was accounted unto him but to actually be righteous in the spirit was not possible in the old testament it was not possible until jesus came paid the price for sin on the cross but for you and i we live in the new testament and jesus christ has come and he's taken care of the sin he's paid the price for sin on the cross so the church is neglected and you can you can see this even today in 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 the you know it's focused on man's weakness i'm a servant i'm a humble servant no revelation of sonship when paul writes in galatians i mean i think some people just skip over these verses or neglect to read the New Testament. Paul says, you're no longer a servant, you're a son. Well, why does the Bible say we're servants? Because we are sons and daughters of God that serve. Our position in Christ is not a servant that serves. Our position in Christ is sons and daughters of God in his family with God as our father that serve. We bring forth his work in this earth. We are not these unworthy sinners that are trying to make it through life, we are, but you see, this is what the church has taught. The church has neglected to teach on righteousness. It's neglected to teach many churches the revelation of the New Testament, who we are in Christ. The church has taught man's weakness. The church has taught man's ability to please God. God. The church has written songs like, there's no one like you. There's no one like you. Yes, the word says that as he is, so are we in this world. Now, I understand when it comes to position of deity, and, and there is no one like God is deity, and, and there's no man that's to be worshipped in this earth. That's the difference between man and God. We are not here to be worshipped. That doesn't mean that if people, you know, uh, show honor to other people and things like that, that's different. But the person that's getting the honor <laughs> needs to also take that back to the Lord and remind the people that he, the God is the one that has caused the success to come forth in the person's 
person's life. And so this is what righteousness has done. And people have written songs. I mean, there's, there's beautiful songs out there. And then they just slip in those one or two sentences about being these unworthy little worms in the earth that can't have any kind of confidence in re a relationship with God as Father in this earth. It's so, so important. And so... You know, we people write these songs, you know, only you're worthy. What a sinner man I am. And and but praise God, I'm, I'm not going against all of this because but I'm noticing that that there are many, many good songs that are coming forth in the general body of Christ, not just these few groups of people that really got the revelation of who they are. But now it's coming forth more and more songs that are loaded with good stuff and loaded with revelation. But please, please, please build your life. If you're a minister of the gospel, please get grounded in who you are in Christ and help people to get grounded in New Testament revelation. It is so important. Well, let me leave you with one scripture, and then we're going to close. Notice Romans 5 and verse, verse 1. In Romans 5, in verse 1, it says, Therefore, being justified by faith. Look at this. The word justified in the book of Romans, in the book of Romans, is full of revelation of righteousness. Romans 5, verse 1 says, Therefore, being justified, notice, by faith, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Right there is one of the first verses in the Bible. Of course, there's many, many verses in the Bible that are going to show you that things that I teach you about righteousness are so. It says, therefore, being justified or being made righteous by faith, we have peace with God. So what does this mean? We, through God's righteousness, through what Jesus has done for us, by faith, have the ability to stand before God's presence without a sense of guilt or inferiority as if we had never sinned before. Well, I look forward to being with you again tomorrow as we continue on with this series on righteousness. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. And I want to invite you to join us tonight. Tonight we will be on the internet live at 7 o'clock German time. It's our teaching night it's our bible school night it's online live and it'll greatly greatly bless you it starts at seven o'clock german time there'll be three 35 minute teachings from different ministers of this ministry here in germany they'll all be tonight in english and german or german and english and it's going to be powerful so join us you can go uh <clears throat> on the internet and you can find your time zone just Type in Germany's time zone and then find yours and you'll find out how many hours difference it is. And we'll look forward to having you on. The chat is on. You can uh, write in during the chat at the end of the third session and we'll pray for you if you have any prayer needs. And it's always a great, great time here as well as with the people that are with us live on the Internet. This is Mark Irvin. Look forward to being with you tomorrow as we continue on with this series. You are the righteousness of God in Christ.